So I wanted to make a Happy New Year video. Uh, my uh, ex-wife uh, let me have the boo dog for the holiday. She's uh, in Biloxi gambling with all my, or our money, after she uh, did the midnight move out of the house. Uh, um, and uh, we actually had uh, a lunch and she wanted me to pay for it. <laughs> I told her, I said, I got medical bills. I'd appreciate you just pitching in, and she did, so that's good. All right, so let's just get into it real quick. Um, the uh, the first thing in today's news was uh, you Russia. By the way, I, I want you to see, you know, I, I hope you're kind of seeing how the media narrative just changes day by day by day and uh, and how we're so manipulated by the, uh, the media. Uh, you know, when the war first started, they said, well, Russia is, you know, the sanctions are going to crush Russia. No, no, they didn't. Then they said Russia's going to run out of uh, munitions. Uh, and that went on for quite some time. Oh, they don't have any missiles. They don't have the, the, the wherewithal. They don't have the stay in power. Uh, you know, the ruble's going to crash. Uh, and, that, that, and, of course, slowly that narrative changed. Uh, so today, let's, let's look at how uh, depleted the Russian munitions are. Um, 170 <laughs> 70 missiles just struck Ukraine today. Holy moly, 170. That, that sounds to me like uh, Russia's got more now than they had at the beginning of the war, which is, of course, what's happened. They've ramped up their uh, military production beyond belief. Like I said, 30% of their GDP, uh, last number that I heard, uh, is going into the war effort. Uh, you know, think about the United States, how much are we spending? Um the other thing uh, with the war, I found this very interesting. This, I think this just happened today. Uh, it was uh, Vladimir Putin has invited uh, Xi out of China to uh, come up and, uh, and, and basically have cocktail hour there in uh, Russia. Uh, so they're uh, solidifying their alliance. Uh, that'll be very interesting. Uh, now, you know, you know that Biden is in the back pocket of China. So that's, uh, that's bad. Um, and of course... I, you know, I found out on the radio the other day, I did, I did not know, I knew Mitch McConnell was a swamp rat, uh, but I did not know that he has an entire shipping industry that uh, China pays for, uh, so he's in the back pocket of China, so we can see how our uh, U.S. politicians are all in the back pocket of China. But, you know, I wonder what's going to happen when, when Russia and China align. I mean, it seems like these neocons or, or these corrupt individuals, uh, I... Of course, you know, now, and of course, we found out how much Soros is involved in Ukraine. Uh, I tell you what, that guy is, uh, I, 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 he must be one of the, the four soldiers of the Antichrist. <laughs> I mean, Soros, I, I mean, I, man, have you seen him? I, he looks like uh, the, the, the figurehead out of um, a Star Wars. Remember, you know, with the, if, look at a picture of George Soros. I mean, I'm going to tell you what. I mean, you just look at him and you go like, man, that guy, he, he looks evil. It's kind of like Nancy Pelosi, you know, if she, she hadn't done her eyebrows up way real high. I mean, my God. Uh, these people, are, whew, I guess uh, you know when you, when you, uh, when you're corrupt and evil, uh, you just get ugly. But anyway, um, so the other thing is, uh, boy, I tell you, Jeff, just, just fish around on uh, YouTube or uh, Rumble, or uh, I, I guess I, I don't, I'm not on the other platforms like Rockfin and stuff like that. I hear about him, uh, but Colonel McGregor, he's all over the place. Uh, he, by the way, he was in the Trump administration, uh, and I think that's a compliment to him. And, uh, man, he's breaking down the Ukraine war. I, I can't do any better than he could. I mean, you, know, you just have to listen to him. Um, basically, what he's saying is that uh, uh, Bakhrut uh, is a meat grinder for the Ukrainians and that uh, the offensive will be coming within the next uh, month or so uh, once the ground is frozen. And, uh, we'll see how right he is, right? Uh, of course, the media, oh, my God. Well, see, you know, that, that's what's going to be interesting that I can't wait to see. Is like okay, so Ukraine is winning the war. Russians are dying by the thousands. Uh, I, that's the that's the narrative that we're being spun right now. So what if McGregor is right? What are they going to say in a couple of months? Well, according to McGregor, he just says they just won't say anything. It'll just go silent, and so you won't hear anything about Ukraine no more. Um, and that's probably a, a, a accurate assessment. I, I can I can believe that. Um, so the uh, the other interesting thing that I found uh, was uh, and, and you know this well, you know 
the West imposed all of those sanctions on Russia, which have bank fire, backfired. I mean, talk about a 180 degree spin. <laughs> oh my God. Russia is now sanctioning Europe. Holy shit. I never, I never saw that one coming. I mean, I can tell you what. I mean, I, I thought those sanctions would hurt Russia. I just didn't think it would end Russia. Uh, man, it, but it turned into just the opposite. Uh, so now Russia is selling all of their uh, fuel uh, at huge profit to China, uh, Indonesia, India. Uh, and basically, 80% of the world is buying, <laughs> buying Russia diesel and oil. Holy shit, Russia is, they're, the, they're becoming, seriously, the richest country on earth because they're rich in commodities. So basically, the West has just destroyed themselves. But we'll see. We'll see where it all goes. You know, I could be wrong. Um, the other thing that I found uh, very interesting for uh, 2022, uh, and, and you know what? I mean, I tell you what, these globalist idiots, you know, especially the in Germany, I mean, oh my God, Angela Merkel uh, and Francis Holland, I mean, they, they came out and they said the Minsk agreements that they made with Russia back, what, in, I, I don't know when it was, I, I want to say 2014 or so, uh, to, to basically say that Ukraine, they weren't going to arm Ukraine and uh, that Ukraine was uh, going to remain neutral. Uh, that was just a, uh, a time buying uh, device so that they could arm up uh, Ukraine for a war with Russia. Well, they, they accomplished uh, what they wanted. And so do you think Russia's going to trust the West at this point? I mean, in any peace agreement, especially with Biden or Germany, Merkel or uh, Macron in, in France. Oh, hell no. The Russians are not even going to come close to an agreement with them. So, oh, my goodness gracious. I mean, you just see this stuff and you just go like, what are the I mean, and to admit it publicly on multiple occasions that they basically just and they were taking great pride in how they they duped russia into this war man i tell you so uh 2023 i was going into all of my predictions and i forgot i, I didn't even mention that i think that we're going to see 50 dollars silver uh probably two thousand dollar platinum and uh maybe three thousand dollar gold so those are my predictions for 2023 continued because we are on new year's eve uh, so I can go ahead and, uh, and say that the current prices are um, uh, 2414 for silver, uh, 1079 for platinum, and 1831 for, uh, for gold. Um, so we'll see. We'll see if I'm right about that. So I, I did want to add to my predictions for 2023. Uh, the power grid attacks, uh, like I said, we had um, two in North Carolina, and it was actually four. Four, I, I think, in my video, I said it was three, but no, it was four in Washington State. Those are probing attacks. Uh, that's going to continue. You got two million uh, terrorists. Uh, you got the cartels in the country. Um, things are going to get kind of rough here. I, I think that there's going to be uh, attacks all over the United States in 2023. It's going to get rough. Uh, can law enforcement deal with it? I think we can here in Florida. I do believe that we have the infrastructure to deal with it. Maybe Texas also, but I think a lot of the rest of the country, um, they're just not prepared for what's coming. Um, that's just my opinion. So uh, buckle down. Uh, and I'm going to talk about a couple of things that you can do. I, these videos are not about doom and gloom all the time. I just want to to, to give you the, the, uh, the other thing. The other thing I hadn't thought about, you know, is that the globalists, you know, you have to understand, they're trying to establish, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, remember back in medieval times, you had the king and the queen and the, the nobles, and, uh, and then you had the serfs. There was no in-between. There was no middle class. And so that's kind of what the, uh, the globalist uh, elites uh, like Biden, Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, all of them, you know, that's what they're trying to establish. They, they want you as a serf, and uh, they, they just basically control everything. And uh, so I was wondering, you know, with all these immigrants coming into the country, really, what was that all about? I think that they want a new slave labor force here in the United States um, that they're going to employ uh, to, to do their bidding. Um, that's, that's my honest opinion. Of course, at the same time, they're being victimized with, um, um, you know, a lot of those young girls are in brothels now. Uh, the, the, the human trafficking that's taking place, uh, of course, the fentanyl that's killing uh, so many of our young uh, people in the country, you know, that's what the Democrats are all for. And then the rhino Republicans, I, I got to include them. I mean, 23 voted for the bill. So, you know, you, you can't just say, uh, anyway, uh, the last thing, uh, let's see. Um, oh gosh, it was my last note here. I can't even read it. 
type oh yeah this is this is the video yeah this this is what i wanted you to hear so this is um oh wait let's talk about what i can do to help you i forgot about that all right so the first thing was i made made a new order uh this is some new mountain house stuff that i bought this is uh yellow curry uh it's i got uh, 10 more meals if you buy 10 from rei you get a 10 percent discount so i got a new box of food that's enough literally to last me about a month uh and it was a hundred and it's still only a hundred and four dollars I'm, I'm absolutely shocked that and like i said the reason that i like these is that I can travel with them, you know, I mean, these fit very easily in a suitcase or uh, whatever you want to do. And then all you do is just add hot water. If you got a backpack stove, you can just heat them, heat, you just heat the water up to a boiling amount and uh, just add it in here. And then all you need is a spoon, you know, uh, you let it sit for 15, 20 minutes and then you just eat it with the spoon. And it's two meals. I mean, for me anyway, the other thing I wanted to tell you is uh, how cheap I am. Um, so, you know, one of the things that, you know, you, you gotta be looking around at your life and, uh, I know this sounds silly. Okay. Uh, I, I cut my own hair for the most part. I mean, if, if you had a, if you had a wife that would cut your hair or a, a spouse, let's just say your husband or wife, um, that would cut your hair, that would be wonderful. You know, one of the real warning signs that I should have been divorced a long time ago was I would ask my, uh, ex-wife to cut my hair and she goes i won't do it i don't know how i don't want to I, and, and i was like why would you even cut my damn hair you know i mean what the hell you know all it is is you can buy one of these clippers and this is this is what i got uh and this is the wall w-a-h-l and uh, i tell you what it does a good job and uh and so i took to cutting my own hair now do i cut it every time no i cut it maybe like twice and then i go to the barber or the hair shop and let them cut it because you know my eyebrows <laughs> when you get old you get you get hair growing out of your ears and hair growing out of your nose you know so they, they'll take care of all the the, uh, the 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 little stuff but you can always cut your own hair now the other thing is I've got um, psoriasis and uh, and so that's a good good reason to cut your hair because when when your hair is short I swear the psoriasis it just kind of goes away and the only reason I found that out was when I had cancer and I went bald and all my psoriasis went away so I just keep my hair short it's not a military thing although I do I just do like the hair short I mean it's just I don't have to style it I don't have to I mean like you know you watch Dave Rubin on the Rubin report you know they he's got the hairspray and his hair is perfect or uh um, uh, or Newsom out of California. I mean, you. I mean, I can't imagine how much time they must spend on their hair just getting it perfect, or even Trump for that matter. You know, I mean, <laughs> that hair is always just perfect. You know. Anyway, so yeah, I, I like the fact that I just shave it all off, but it's more for medical reasons. Uh, for me, you know, I I wouldn't mind having hair. I you know, I think it'd be good. But I tell you, the psoriasis just comes in and it goes crazy. And uh, but yeah, I get you a set of clippers. It saves me fifteen dollars a pop. That's almost a silver coin, and that's the way I look at it. That's almost a silver coin every time I cut my own hair. All right, so let's get to the video. Uh, I'm gonna make a. Well, I don't know. I, 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 well, all right. Let's just talk about very briefly my year in review. Uh, back in January of 2022, uh, I got a phone call that my mom was dying. I went up to Virginia to, to basically uh, bed sit her, to, to hold her hand and watch her die. It turned out she'd overdosed on pills. She woke up because uh, she wasn't, wasn't able to kill herself. Uh, and I, at that time, I had engaged hospice hospice came in and because uh, i thought she was dying uh and then she got better and better because uh, i was feeding her i don't think that the cleaning lady that was taking care of my mom was feeding her properly uh so she got better and better and and so i and then i wanted to come back to florida and hospice uh, uh I'm, a, I'm an only child they placed a court order upon me that i could not leave the commonwealth of virginia because that would be elder abuse uh, uh, until I got my mother 24 hour care, but she had a colonoscopy bag. If you contact all the various services like, uh, uh, visiting angels or any of those, all they do is they just sit there and look at old people and, uh, maybe bring them food and water, but they will not take care of the colonoscopy bag because that's considered a medical procedure. So I couldn't get her 24 hour care. I couldn't get her to move out of the house. She was judged competent. I mean, it just went on and on until March 
Finally, I went to social services. Social services came in uh, because I told them that she had threatened me with a gun, which she couldn't get to. It was an empty threat. I moved the gun out of her room down to the basement where she could not ever get to because she can't, couldn't even uh, walk. Well, at that time, she couldn't even get out of the bed. They sent in the SWAT team. There was four police cars lined up across the street. An ambulance came in. Uh, they, they, they basically carted my mother out of the house, accused me of elder abuse because she was starving to death. You know, their, her skin was hanging off her limbs. She cussed me out every single day that I was there. The smell from that colonoscopy bag was unfreaking believable. I had a hard time sleeping in the room next to her, but I was there under court order. I couldn't get back to my house in Florida. So then once she was in, uh, in, in, in the, uh, we finally, well, I actually, four nursing homes, uh, to tell you what a mean person my mom's was, I didn't even know this, four nursing homes rejected her because <laughs> they said she was too mean because she cussed them out. Every one of them that came in, they said, well, you know, we'd like to take you into our nursing home and take care of you. And she'd go like, F you, F you, get the hell out of my room, get the hell out of my room. And so I didn't even know that nursing homes, they can actually reject an old person that's, that's belligerent. So I, and so I was going to the hospital and I was saying, are you please, God, you're going to take my mama. You can't send her back home. I said, I can't take care of her and, and, and I can't get 24 hour care. I said, you know, this is getting to be March or April, you know, and so the year's kind of getting away from me i just want to go home to florida i lost my job i had a job here you know and so so this just kind of dragged on and uh anyway i got lawyers involved and everything so finally you know we they put her uh, there was a nursing home that finally accepted her and then she called four lawyers to write me out of the will and then it went on until uh until till may and she finally died in the nursing home she by the way she tried like hell like she called four lawyers to write me out of the will uh, they wouldn't come into the nursing home. I guess they told her that she had to get to them. So she got into the hallway, fell on the floor, broke. I think she might have broke a bone. I don't, I don't remember. She bruised herself up. No, I think she just bruised herself up very badly because she was determined to get out of the nursing home to write me out of the will because uh, she hated me that much. And, uh, and it just went on. So then finally, I, in the end, I, 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 I don't understand. I don't know what happened. I was going to bed. It was 11 o'clock at night. It was dark. And somehow I fell down the stairs into her basement. There, there was, she had taken the railings out of the hallway. <laughs> I, mean, I don't even understand it. And I, man, I hit the stairs, broke my collarbone, broke two ribs, broke my neck. Uh, I was in the hospital two months. I did, so this is my whole month, my whole year of 2022. And then I've just basically been recovering from there. So there you go. So that was 2022 for me. I hope you had a much better year than I did, but I'm very happy and I'm enjoying things. God is with me. All right, so let's listen to this. This will finish off the video. I'm sorry I, this got a little long in the tooth, but uh, let's, let's listen to a woman from Ukraine who was prophetic about what the future of her country was going to be. His Excellency, Mr. Chevik, for his briefing. By now, we give the floor to Ms. Tatiana Monchan. Tatiana Monchan. She is dressing the UN at this point. So let's. Hello, this is the technician. Can you please unmute your microphone? Technical difficulties. Okay. Good morning. Yeah. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I do hope you can hear me. I uh, listened very carefully to everything that was said by the speakers before me and I would like to say to you this, I am completely certain that you all know very well that never ever ever the authorities in Kiev had the intention of implementing either the first uh, package of Minsk agreements and much less so the second Minsk agreements. This is simply a pause to be able to say, yes, we're going to implement that. In so what she's talking about was just what I was talking about a second ago. The Minsk agreements were, were uh, basically a peace agreement between Russia and the West. And what she's saying is, this was years ago. She said, "There's no, they, they have no intention of, of obeying those agreements. It's kind of like the, 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 the nuclear war treaties that we established with Russia. 
So who violated the treaty? It was the West. Meantime, I will receive weapons from NATO. Our armed forces will become stronger, and we do hope that in... Now, do you understand that? The West, immediately after the agreement, started arming Ukraine to the teeth. Sometime later, we will be able to uh, get back uh, the rebellious re republics by force. It's not only they do not want to talk to the republics, and this was said by Zelensky directly. So she's talking about the Donbass region, okay? They, they, they're the rebellious republics of Ukraine. And the West was arming uh, Western Ukraine to take those back, to unify Ukraine against the East. So you see, the, the, the World War started years ago. Just now, he said that he sees no reason to have dialogue with Donetsk and Luhansk. They do not want to have conversations with the uh, civil society, even within Ukraine. People who do not want uh, to go to Europe or NATO. People who are against the coup d'etat. Who want to live in peace and uh, friendship in Russia and other countries. These people, not only are they not represented within Ukrainian politics at all, they are being criminally prosecuted. I'm a criminal lawyer. Ruslan Katapa simply posted a video on YouTube saying that he is in favor of peace and against war in Donbass. And he has been a trial since 2015 and the accusation is high treason. I went to Donbass personally to visit one of the commanders, now dead, Mr. Moskovoy, so was to, 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 to take a detainee back. And I saw a huge number of people whose only uh, fault is uh, that they're against Maidan, against coup d'etat, against NATO and Europe. And you now want to tell me that those people who sit in judgment over others people or other people's because uh, they have placed a like in social in social um... she was banned from the UN and never spoke again networks. People who closed all opposition channels, who are prosecuting all opposition politics, that these people are going to hold conversation with Donetsk and Luhansk. It is very clear that this is in principle an, a possibility. This would, this is a matter and antimatter. They annihilate each other. So, what is the problem? What was the difficulty? to provide a special status. Uh. And let's just reflect on this. People like Tatiana Montiel. This is Jason Hinkle on uh, Rumble, and that's where I got this uh, footage from. Um, he's been uh, banned from YouTube. I mean, not from tr Twitter now. <laughs> so I guess Elon Musk is not total free speech, or maybe the bots are still in control. Who knows? Uh, and uh, but I, I I love watching him. It's called the dive on uh, on Rumble, and uh, th th most people say that he's a Russian uh, um, opportunist or whatever. I just find him very interesting. I think he I, he's got some really good slants on stuff. But you know, he found this video, not me. Who again is a Ukrainian criminal attorney who's speaking out. They don't show you these Ukrainians. They show. Oh, Slava Ukraini is our Slava Ukraini right sector. Only I taught your book, you are my lover. They show you those Ukrainians, you know, the, you know, the Slava Ukraini, but they don't show you, they don't show you the truth. This is the truth. This is Tetyana Motyan. This is uh, millions of followers on social media because she tells the truth to the Ukrainian people. Okay? And look at this. She was called a, a Russian, you are a Russian propagandist. Russian propagandist Tatyana Motyan because you called out the truth of the Minsk agreements. 
Well, now we have the truth of the Minsk agreements. Merkel doubles down on Ukraine peace revelations. The former German leader reiterated again, double down, second time, that the 2014-2015 Minsk agreements were not meant to try and establish peace, but were meant to give Kiev a stronger army and more time to prepare for the eventual war that she supported against Russia with the Ukrainians. And then Holland, ex-French leader, agreed with German counterpart's description of the real purpose behind the Minsk agreement. She, he backed up Merkel's revelation on the Donbass peace agreement. So uh, they said that yes, it was indeed a plot to buy Ukraine time and should be credited for Kiev's successful resilience now. And you know, I can say a lot about this, but what I am... Alright, so that's kind of where I'll finish off the year. <clears throat> so that's it. Uh, yeah, my, my 2022 has been... <laughs> <laughs> been pretty rough. <laughs> I remember when I got home in well, I, when I finally got back to Florida in July after breaking my neck, uh, I couldn't get up off the floor, and I'd, I'd wallow around, and I'm falling, I can't get up, and I'd have to crawl across the floor and grab a hold of a chair, and you know my hands are still numb, my feet are still numb. Uh, uh, well, uh, certain parts of my body don't work no more, um, but you know. I ain't complaining. I, if you watch my channel, I'd made a video. I, I hiked, uh, well, I hiked about four or five miles. Uh, I didn't fall down. I, I've been falling down quite a bit. Um, that's a, that's a problem. Uh, and I'm home alone. And, uh, and then that's a good thing. You know, I, I didn't need to be married to my Biden loving Democrat wife, uh, who, uh, basically, uh, thinks that I'm a right wing lunatic. Um, but I just wanted to say happy new year, peace out, stay free. And, uh, I think 2023 is going to be an interesting year, and I'm trying to, to help you out, buy you some clippers. That'll save you. At least you can cut your own hair, right? Uh, buy some more food. Uh, that's what I'm doing. Um, you know, I pretty much prepared the house. I've, I've done many videos about prepping. I've, you know, new hot water heater, new dishwasher, new washer dryer. You know, I mean, you name it. I did it before, luckily, before my wife uh you know, and, and that, now I know why she was complaining so much about the money I was spending because she was plotting against me the whole time. By the way, there's a there was a huge video. <laughs> this guy, it was insane. He was talking about the fact that uh, he was married, and uh, and his wife was plotting against him. And she came up to him and she said, "I want a divorce." Now my wife never said that. She just just did a midnight run. Um, but uh, but his wife said, "I want a divorce." And then when he tried to resist or he, you know, lawyered up and thought, you know, he was going to fight it because then they do discovery and uh, everything. Uh, the poor guy ended up in jail. Well, basically what the story was that, that, that she invited him into the bedroom and they had sex and he thought they were making up. And then she called the police and said that he uh, it was a spousal rape. I didn't even know such a thing existed. But she claimed that it was spousal rape. It was a depressing video on YouTube. <laughs> and he goes, and so the, the police arrested him because, you know, I, I guess you can rape your wife. I did not know that, but I guess so. And uh, And so then he ended up in jail. And so then she was able to just, he had, well, he had millions. I did, I don't know have millions of dollars. You know, like I said, my wife was somewhat uh, decent. She took most everything, but I got enough to survive. Um, thank God she left me that. But uh, but his wife, I mean, she was out for blood, man. She was trying to get everything. And it, it, his life was utterly destroyed. <laughs> like, and then he had, well, of course, he had kids and he had uh, alimony. And and they because of the charges against him for spousal uh, rape and abuse, um, he had to pay a huge amount, like 4000 a month or some kind of crazy shit uh, in, 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 in alimony and, and child support, uh, which, you know, he, he, he was working. Th he had to work three jobs just to pay that amount. Uh, it was crazy. I mean, the whole story, you'd, you'd have to listen to it. So um, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of at the point where I think long and long and long and long and hard before you get married. Uh, I think it's more, uh, I will never get married again, but I, you know, I, I would say just kind of date. Um, if you want to live with somebody and, and be partners and uh, maybe have some um, uh, friends with uh, friends with favors type of a situation, I'd say that's a much better way to, in today's legal uh, world. Um, you know, that, that to me, uh, don't share your finances, don't, you know, remain independent. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, you could, you could have a very beneficial relationship with somebody, 
Uh, I just don't think you want the legal entanglements uh, of a marriage. Uh, and hell, I think some of the billionaires have found that out. Uh, well, well, when you think about Tiger Woods, <laughs> I mean, his, his wife, she took him to the cleaners, didn't she? I mean, you know, there's many examples of that. So what I'm saying is, you know, yeah, it's okay to be with somebody. I guy or girl, whatever you want, lesbian or gay or, you know, whatever. But uh, I just I just wouldn't get into, and, and of course, then you got to be careful because if you live with somebody for too long, uh, I don't know, some states have, you know, that you're legally married after a certain number of years or crazy stuff like that. You know, I would make sure that, I don't know, you, you, you have to look at the laws of your state. You know, maybe you make sure that she has a place to go back to uh, or he, uh, that they claim is their home. That way, they're really not living with you, even though even though they are living with you. And maybe you, I, I don't know, maybe you could rent that property out and uh, and just uh, and live together. And that way, legally, you after seven years, you're not declared legally married. Anyway, that's it. Uh, it's good, 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 good to live in the free, free, free state of Florida. I'm sorry to make such a long video, but boy, I had to get into a lot of topics here. It was, it's been a crazy year, crazy year, and uh, happy new year. Uh, can't wait to just watch the ball come down. Like I said, I got the uh, got the dog because my wife's in Biloxi gambling away all her money, or our money, or my money, or, or uh, you know, I guess, well, it's her money now. All right, stay free.